Parental discretion is advised. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza. The podcasters. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show episode 465. That's a lot of Tuesdays. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters at the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk about professionalized wrestling. In a way. Uh, with me is the panel of guests uh, straight out of an indie film. It's Papa Lunchbox. What? What did you say? Did you say panel? Like panel riot? Yes, Sorg, that's right. You can find Panel Riot. Is this too soon? The plugs are later. No, that's all right. This is, this plugs is a place. You can start here. Oh, good, good. Get the plugs out on top. Go check us out, panelriot.com. This week we're talking about the Smash Netflix series Daredevil. And if you keep an eye on your audio playlists, uh, we're going to have a special guest later on this week. Excellent, excellent. Also with us from San Antonio, Texas, he is the commenter. Com, commenter? Yes. Commenter. On, on the message board, apparently, for the Inspire Pro Wrestling. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> on uh, the Inspire Pro Wrestling indie message board. Um, that, 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 that's when, this is the time when inflection matters. <laughs> exactly. He's a commenter. Damn it, commentator. This is why you're the one with the words. Uh, Eamon Payton for Inspire Pro Wrestling down in San Antonio or Austin or wherever the hell it is. At Eamon to please on Twitter. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I prefer the phrase commentator, mainly because it has the phrase tater in it. And I'm from the <laughs> South. <laughs> that, that insight and more if you go pick up an Inspire Pro Wrestling DVD on Smart Mark Video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yes, also with us, I'm back on, he's uh, one of the guys over at InsertCoinToBegin.com. He is the Riz. It, it, it is correct, Sorg. Uh, and by the way, uh, go to intercoinbegin.com. I did a cool review on MLB 2K15, MLB 15, the show, and also I did a video. Ooh! Come at me, bro. <laughs> what? Oh shit! <laughs> 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 You're going to be yeah. right over here. And we're off and running. <laughs> wow. I, I, I dropped on Rondre the Giant. Riz is drunk here. Also with he us. Okay. Also with us representing yet another indie is uh, he's the sound guy and social media person over at the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, RWALive.com. It's Wheels at Hot Wheels, RWA. Wow. I'm back. And I'm black. And I'm better than ever. Hey, what's up, everybody? No. It's me. It's Hot Wheels. Don't you shake your head at me, Sorg. You know, when you have me on this show, how, I make it so entertaining. How is it every time we have Hot Wheels on, he is one of the, he is a, he's just going off racist more than us. <laughs> how am I racist when what? I'm making myself? I know, but, I, I, but he just just does a, he just out of the blue goes, "I'm black." And it's like, okay, <laughs> that's for everybody on audio. That's for everybody on audio. You're awesome. All right, all right. So okay, I am awesome. Yeah. Now that we we've set the table for that, we got a special guest. He's going to be joining us. When we hopefully, if he sticks around, if we haven't scared him away yet. Jesus, Lord, what uh, show do you have me on? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we have Chris, Chris LaRusso here. I was listening back to the old interview from 2008 was oh, when you joined Lord. the show the first time, yeah. which I couldn't. I kept calling you Chris LaRusso for some reason because I was probably tired. And uh, I, that you point. said that you discovered the show because DJ Lunchbox pounded a can of cocaine. Uh, yes, oh. I, I remember that uh, you were. I remember that. Were, were you? just drinking random objects that you found around the house. Some, something about that had happened. And um, it wasn't just a, a can of cocaine. There was also um, some creamer called Stoke that you were doing yes. shots of yes. in the studio. Yeah. For, and, and I was incredibly entertained. So, uh, <laughs> so I've, been a fan, I've been a fan ever since. I sadly remember that moment. Uh, we, uh, for, for context to the listener, we used to review energy drinks of all shapes and sizes. I figured and, it was the demographic uh, for it. It's mm -hmm. true. I, uh, I did, I drank, I shotgunned a can of, uh, something called cocaine because I was <laughs> chewing on it and it punctured in my mouth. 
Um, and that story is the story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Things puncturing in his mouth. Yes. Wow. Uh, so, uh, and exploding. At Chris LaRusso on yep. the Twitters. And uh, Chris LaRusso on Facebook. If that sounds familiar, you might have seen him on, I don't know, Ring of Honor? Mm-hmm. He's Ring of on. Honor, uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling, Pro Wrestling Express, Black Diamond Wrestling. Uh, I'm going to start forgetting people, and they're going to be really upset. Jewel City Championship Wrestling. Um, done some stuff with RWA in the past. A mm-hmm. uh, lot of indies in the uh, Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, um, and of course, Ring of Honor <laughs> here and there. So, so you'll be hanging out with us talking wrestling, and then we're going to have a very in-depth interview with you a little bit later. So, thank, thank you for having me. Mayhem Show, awesome. Uh, so, of course, you can check us out. We're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com for this and all kinds of other shows. We got the Mayhem Minute, we got uh, Midweek War, we got uh, Raw Wrap Up, uh, all kinds of fun stuff just around wrestling. Indie Mayhem Show, of course, as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can also drop us a line. Uh, we're at uh, 412-206-WMS0 or the email address Good Times! Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and please subscribe to us. Look for the Wrestling Mayhem Show on all of our affiliated shows on iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, and YouTube and wherever else. We're throwing some stuff over on Daily Motion if you're, you know, stealing Ring of Honor shows from over there while you're at it. Just go ahead and subscribe to some Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, so there you go. I'm going to Sorgatron Media Feed. Hey, Clamor. Clamor, no E. Look for it on your iTunes store, and uh, you can find us on there as well. Um, he just made up a word. I, somebody did. Somebody did. Uh, mm-hmm. So let's get right into it. First of all, before we got on, on into the show, there was some breaking news. Oh, Chris, yes. Chris, Chris LaRusso, you, you are on top of this. Absolutely. You have your finger on the pulse of the industry. What uh, is happening over there in the UK? From our good friends at WrestleZone.com, who, uh, for all your wrestling news, Fan Rush Ring at SmackDown Taping. A group of fans rushed the ring tonight at the WWE SmackDown Taping in London. It happened during the main event after the participants had all made their entrances, but before any of the action had started. One of them performed the rock bottom to another before leaving the ring with security chasing the boys (laughs) and escorting them from the area. I have also been told that apparently somewhere on the internet there is uh, footage of this. (laughs) So... From like uh, from like the front row of like the on the hard camera side, somebody filmed the entire thing, including the uh, alleged rock bottom. The alleged rock uh, bottom. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. I don't think they're going to come back to London ever again, or at least for a little while. I know that they will. Like they'll just kind of shore up security. I'm sure if they go back to that venue. I'm actually, getting uh, reports from Justin Labar on Twitter. Uh, mm-hmm. He's 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 getting stuff. Uh, you, you he's got some commentary on this. UK fans entertaining but lucky. Jumping in the barricade is disrespect. I'm all for pr- a praying security guard gets to you before the wrestlers do. Mm. Now, have you ever been? A, a, we're getting a little side stuff. Here, but this is insight. <coughs> have you ever been uh, involved with somebody jumping the barrier on you? Uh, or, or sometimes yes. there's no barriers. Well, right? I mean, sometimes the 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 line is literally no line. Yeah, and. Yeah. Um, I've been lucky over the past uh, couple years, things in the Pittsburgh area, generally the fans uh, respect boundaries and don't do anything. But I do remember very early in my career, a show in State College, where a, I'm guessing just a drunk college fan, jumped the barricade, got in the ring, did the Ric Flair strut, and sprinted out. <laughs> so, um, and and the participant, we were just like, because there was a point where we were wondering, Okay, is this something that we just didn't know was going to happen? That mm-hmm. that are we? Is, are you in on? Do you know anything about this? And before we could, you know, and nothing we, bad happened. No, they were just no, like, I've never well, been a. I've never like, been like, attacked. Is it, is it a rib? Is it a, you know? Yeah, what's going something on? like that. So. Now, now, the worst thing I've seen was the time before they had barricades at IWC, like the second or third time they were up in Clearfield. Mm-hmm. Um, this lady hauling off and hitting J Rock with a chair. Jesus Christ! Yes. Not very well. Very ginger tap to his back in the long run. He's a big guy; he can yeah. take it. Uh, and then somebody else got into got into uh, Shane Taylor's face as well. Oh, that's and, that that's that's a one way trip to the emergency room. Oh right yeah. There. yeah, oh yeah. And then he comes up to me on our camera is like, "Can't wait to see this on DVD." I'm like, "Oh, we're not putting that on the DVD." <laughs> so, and they have barricades ever since. So there you go. I'm you, surprised. For your protection. <laughs> you know, you know what sort hmm. though with that. Just, just the thought of talking about the barricades. Lorenzo probably would agree with this. At least with the RWA crowd, they're nuts, but they're not that nuts. I've been really worried a few times down there, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I mean, I mean, the worst you get to see is 
an old lady get power driven in the middle of a ring, right, Riz? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but very yeah, interesting man. stuff Still going on there. To this day, but, uh, uh, the other word uh, retweeted by Labar from this uh, Outlaw Evans over there. Uh, on Twitter. Uh, he says he was sitting in the sixth row and it pissed him off watching these idiots do that. They are a group of, quote, pranksters on YouTube. I wonder if this is related to that guy oh, that was wow. doing the uh, public wrestling moves oh, that was yeah. going around and the uh, power, the, the the wrestling moves on his girlfriend in the in the pool that ended up in um, uh, Heyman Hustle a few weeks ago. Yeah. yeah, he, yeah. He, he, this he is going to be on Swerved, isn't it? Oh, no. It could be. Mm. Oh, this could be the jackass oh, thing. Oh, don't tell me this. God damn it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, to come to think of it, that the num the amount of time it would take to get a rock bottom set up that you would think usually security would nab you the second you clear mm -hmm. the barricade. Yeah, and, yeah. And um, I mean, it, we haven't seen anything like this on Raw in a very, very, very long time because security is usually very good about it. If they could get this whole, th maybe, maybe it's We've seen, uh, like pay per views over the past year has popped up. Or we're like, wow, something weird has happened with the camera. You see everybody looking over this way, and there's a fight in the crowd or something, or yeah. somebody jumped down, and they they just got. Mm -hmm. nailed you know mm -hmm. um but yeah for something like that but it sounds like it's a bunch of fans so maybe the numbers game kind of got to gum got to it. Too yeah. many people yeah. that gets a little scary people are like well if enough of us do this and they organize oh this good thing. lord i mean <laughs> the things that don't give happen, them ideas i i hey you know it's the internet man yeah. like like a, a smackdown flash mob in the middle of the ring you know the rest of I mean, the does not and, condone and, the actions no we don't no we don't although it'll probably be funny ramp. you know don't, don't, don't anybody ramp. get hurt i mean they kind of did this with the the daniel bryan fan oh the uh, the thing occupy raw ago. the occupy raw and they yeah. brought everybody in and i know they they vetted everybody not mm -hmm. vetted but they had volunteers basically lined mm -hmm. up and said hey we're doing this thing but i think that also does set a little bit of a precedent in the in the fans minds absolutely and, yeah. and mm -hmm. i mean that's one of the things that um having barricades present at the very least mm -hmm. uh unlike some shows where there's no barricades and fans can can pretty much get right up to the edge of the ring mm -hmm. uh at least it gives the impression of separation you know right. you're on this side we're on that side you cross here and you're out there's of like here. there's a working area you know mm -hmm. and yeah I, I know that and even that's something that i you know on our side with rwa because mm -hmm. they do a thing i think it's great that it happens that they come up and you know they, they bang on the ring but sometimes mm -hmm. it happens at inter-opportune times when they get a little too excited or we still have to work and i have a guy tethered to a court out there mm -hmm. we have to get around mm -hmm. that's a problem yeah. Absolutely. you know Absolutely. and uh it, it, but but and there's no illusion to that and and it's it, you know love the fans that are doing that to a point as a cool to see cool feeling cool vibe mm -hmm killing me on what i need to do for getting the production mm -hmm. done have you ever seen the pwg footage i mean the fans in are, are right up they're so because like like yeah. well because that building's so small that they run it I think yeah it's more of a, but they're yeah. also i mean they're doing something different. they're probably post editing they're, they're not you know tethered mm -hmm. to a cord like what we have going on mm -hmm. um, yeah so anyways uh but a little tidbit there uh since that kind of just broke out did, did somebody have something to say real quick I, I i just think it's a sad result from the last time they were in london when vince came out and was like come on lighten up have some fun <laughs> well here they are having some fun <laughs> well, so you got what you asked for vince they're yeah, at, least they're not, at least they're not being too quiet <laughs> exactly exactly so let's get into our first top topic of the night i hope i worded this right we'll see how this goes there it is extreme rules are neither extreme nor rule we're getting our stipulations are popping up here for the extreme rules and that's coming off i just saw an extreme rules match uh with tommy dreamer and rhino over the weekend in meville with the uh, iwc and uh i mean you know your general thing chairs tables etc um but uh even going into extreme rules like we have a steel cage match okay cool you know uh we understand there's a little bit of spoiler but bobby was reading earlier and i think he's on mute uh, bobby can you unmute for a second are you there maybe yes maybe. sir okay <laughs> tell me what you're bobby on assignment sorry sorry I, i'm kind of bringing you I'm here standing out of turn. Live. <laughs> <laughs> i'm standing live in the uk and i just got rock bottom in the middle of the ring how did i get there um but uh Bo bobby what did you read on the smackdown spoilers uh for any if you know, skip ahead about five minutes if you want to uh skip this thing spoiler what? alert if you care about smackdown mm -hmm. and you care about extreme rules like we said this is neither extreme nor does it rule um, Seamus and Dolph Ziggler, which we knew they were fighting, mm -hmm. they're going to have a kiss me or match, mm -hmm. um, in which I guess the loser has to kiss the other one's rear end. 
Um, what stipulation is that, that that makes it a hardcore match? Well, it, it's extreme. Well, you know, extreme. Maybe they ate a lot of burritos before the match. Yeah. Ooh, there you go. I, I maybe you watch a different kind of hardcore film than I do. That yeah, is true. That, that is true. I've that seen I've true. seen a lot of films and just like that. That is true. In Seattle, they call it a tossed salad and scrambled eggs match. Oh, okay. Um, well, hey, hey, the bell's calling again. God damn it! And, and, and beyond that, <laughs> and beyond that, we do have a Rush, uh, Russian chain match. But uh, you know, I wonder at what point you know we've we've had a very settled down uh, of WWE over the years, where it's not hardcore, it's not extreme like it used to be. You know, I, you know, after the the re rise of ECW. Um, you know, do, does extreme rules work anymore for us? Um, yes and no. Mm -hmm. As a pay per view, um, as a pay per view, as saying this is extreme, you know, and then it's like you know, a kiss my arse match, or you know, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I like even even WWE hardcore matches are mo mostly like special effect, like people going through the the screen uh, the. Titantron screen and they're doing the explosions. Like it's like it's very much like stage. Like it's, it's an like, excuse to do a stunt. Yeah, it's more like stunt work more than it is like actual hardcore wrestling. That's a really interesting thing to connect. Uh, Chris, what do what do you think about the, the the state of extreme in the WWE or in wrestling in general at this point? Well, I mean, uh, you know. After the death of ECW and after uh, as we moved into the the PG era. Um, I think the WWE realized that there was a lot more money to be made uh, appealing to kids, families, things of that nature, and part of, and also a lot more money to be made from sponsors, from uh, major advertisers, and mm -hmm. and things like that. And they realized very quickly that to appeal to those mainstream sponsors and to appeal to those kids and the toy manufacturers, and and you can see now they have you know sponsorships with cell phone companies and. Uh, you know, major corporations that seeing somebody get their head split open uh, on pay-per-view just wasn't going to jive with that. Mm -hmm. And um, they've done some things to to try and uh, to to try and please both masters. But I, I think the era of of hardcore and of of blood and guts, and I, I just think that at least when it comes to WWE, that era is is long gone. Mm -hmm. And um, there's just there's so much more money to be made with a, at this point, a PG product. Um, for, for those of us who were fans of, of ECW and were fans of that style, it, it, you know, it can be disappointing. But, on the, you know, on the other hand, to look back at some of that stuff and to see people get, you know, unprotected chair shots and, right, the, right. you know, razor wire. I mean, hell, there's a lawsuit about the, about, about the concussions that just came up. Yeah, I mean, the, the appeal of it, it has, uh, has lost. And I mean, there are places that that do do it. I know that VOW does um, you know, has their Anarchy title, mm -hmm. and you know does to delve into that. But even that is very very different than the you know. Even that is, I think, there's there's landing on on barbed wire versus mm -hmm. you know getting get, getting cut versus a, a mm -hmm. chair shot like that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I think uh, and unfortunately you do see it. I, I've seen, I would say, two unprotected chair shots across not just vow I, i've mm -hmm. seen one in iwc uh within the past year you know and every time it's like ugh, you know um and, and i hope the person taking it you know said okay i'm going to take that you know mm -hmm. and, and even the footage helped it was a rate not raylan that Ray we would talk about on indie mayhem show amen no uh, uh kimberly kimberly kimberly, that's kimberly. Right, that's oh right. that footage with uh against Chris uh, Dickinson, yeah yeah, Chris yeah. Dickinson, i mean yeah. that and that one i think the reason why that was so shocking is that we haven't seen anything like that in so long. Mm -hmm. um, you can go back to ECW and, and um, Tommy Dreamer was pile driving, yeah. you know, was pile driving yeah. women on a fairly regular you know, basis. It, it, it looked just as sick as, as, as that footage did. Just we, yeah. we, it, so WWE, I think, has done well in reconditioning us to not want the blood and guts. Absolutely. Like they, I think they've done very well for it. Mm -hmm. But I feel like when you get to your TLC and your Extreme Rules and your, even your Hell in a Cells, mm -hmm. yeah. like, I, like that reminds us of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And like they need to do something different. Do you that. think it's also a case of... Um, like a case of even beyond like the blood and stuff like that, like what can we really do anymore? 
Like, I feel like right. the Attitude Era sort of, even the stuff that he did with, like, like you said, I feel like TLC, like this past year was like, what, what are they doing anymore? Like, they're, you know, there's not much you can do. So they have Dean Ambrose get electrocuted or whatever and, <laughs> and, you know, have a stairs match. Like, you well, know. I, f- I feel like that's the nice thing actually about what they're doing now. Mm-hmm. There is so much less uh, of the blood and guts and violence and they are going towards for matches like that, more like stunt work essentially. But when you look at WrestleMania, when Brock Lesnar got busted open on a pole, that meant something. Yes, it did. Yeah. Yes, that did. was that was a, a genuinely shocking thing, and it had an effect mm-hmm. on the match and our mm-hmm. uh, our reaction to the match. If that had happened, you know, five years ago or ten years ago, God, ten years ago, Jesus Christ, we are old. We are old. <laughs> um, if that if that had happened ten years ago, oh, he busted his head open on the pole. Who gives a shit? You know right. what I mean? We just uh, saw the Undertaker cut someone's head off half an hour ago. Mm-hmm. But today, that means something. Just mm-hmm. yeah. a simple blade job means something. I also think I, I think it depends also on the audience you're playing to, um, because I think the issue with them making the hardcore matches more about like stunt work and stuff like that is that while they are appealing to kids, and I'm sure kids will buy that kind of stuff, like you know we we're like, oh, John Cena got put through an electrical circuit board. He's gonna be on Raw tomorrow night. Whatever. Like <laughs> they're cartoon characters. Yeah, they really I are. think. But in the case of Brock and Roman Reigns, that match felt so real. Like it felt like they were legitimately beating the hell out of each other. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think there's ways to maybe to guard, not just hardcore wrestling, but just guard your wrestling towards, you know, making it feel more like an actual fight. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to, you know, be carving people up or anything like that, but at least, you know, make it seem like, like this is an actual fight. It's like, like, so, so, so John Cena is the, we've been talking about the daredevil thing all night. Uh, so, so John Cena is the Avengers movie, whereas uh, Brock Lesnar is the Daredevil, where it's a real person, real consequences fight situation. Going yeah, on. Chris, and that's like, I'm now and I, and I genuinely think... upset that I did not make that reference. That's a really good <laughs> I did not put that together and, on the on my podcast this uh, Chris, week. Chris, he, Chris has something. Um, I, I, just... talk, I talk about how are these two worlds going to fit together. Son of... So yeah, I was saying you you really you good. had a great that was really good you had a great phrase there and it was consequences and that's one of the things that with uh, a lot of these extreme rules matches you feel like there are no real consequences there was a time in wrestling where a steel cage match mm-hmm. there was some question whether or not it would end someone's career mm-hmm. whether you know so that that even these matches even if they didn't really have those major consequences there was the belief that there could be that uh, a no disqualification match could mean someone being injured or someone being stretchered out and um we just don't see those those kind of major consequences uh as much anymore but when you do see it with brock in the main event of wrestlemania Mm -hmm. and then that feels different because it feels like there is consequences to this that, that oh there's blood that he could really be hurt and you get sucked in for a brief mm-hmm. moment that like mm-hmm. what and uh i think even there was some consequences very early in the match before he got split didn't roman bust his eye up in like the first yeah. exchange mm-hmm. yeah so i mean he was visibly swollen mm-hmm. and that was very different from anything we've and, seen and in a I long feel like time it really kind of feels like because i remember seeing on one of the old foley dvds like from wcw like saturday night's main event or whatever mm-hmm. what, what was it saturday night wcw saturday night, main WCW, event? Saturday night. Saturday okay yeah. it, it would when it was like a uh, foley invader and in, when they agreed to like potato me swell mm-hmm. me up you know was like yeah. you know like we're going to go out and do this and make and i think they got in mm-hmm. trouble for it i'm not I'm sure if they mm-hmm. even showed the match mm-hmm. um and that's what wrestlemania's main event felt to me again the mm-hmm. consequence and everything um especially I, I, th- I think because now we have pay-per-views guarded specifically towards these stipulations yeah and they become for lack of a better term gimmicked like they're mm-hmm. they're very gimmicky um it eliminates those consequences and i think that's kind of what the what the problem mm-hmm. lies maybe Certainly, certainly. All right. Well, on that note, I, I want to touch base first. Hey, big shouts to some friends of ours, and we'll get right back. Albie's actually got a really interesting magazine situation that will be delving back in time to look at the future. But first, hey, our friends over at Slice on Broadway, we've been telling you about them every week, but something really cool has happened with them. I wanted to talk about it earlier in the show. Uh, today is actually Slice on Broadway Day in Pittsburgh. 
Oh, and uh, yeah. yeah, they actually got a picture over on their Facebook page. You can go follow them of the proclamation itself. Look at that. And actually get in there. There's a picture of them with uh, uh, Natalia Rudiak, who's their uh, council person here for the area. And, uh, and they got a proclamation and uh, recognized by the city of Pittsburgh doing awesome stuff. And, as I th and of course, then there's us doing the awesome cast in their venue from last <laughs> year uh, for episode 200. That's awesome. Um, but uh, you know, a, a really cool uh, to see them recognize um, their their good friends supporting great podcasts in Pittsburgh with pizza, and it's the best stuff around. It's right down on the tracks here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh in Beachview, as well as Main Street in Carnegie, PA. If you're heading yourself up to uh, out to the uh, airport, coming in for something, you know, maybe all those. Maybe all those uh, legends that came in for Meadville's IWC show. Maybe Kevin Nash hit it up on his way in. You never know. You never know. Big Sexy likes his pizza. You know. Uh, but no, check him out and, and uh, let him know you heard about it on the Wrestling Mayhem show at PGH underscore Slice on the Twitters. Right now. Right now. You can listen to him say, hey, at PGH underscore Slice. Well, listen to you. Congratulations on the proclamation. Heard about it on at Mayhem show. We really appreciate it. Let him know you're listening. You're knowing about them from here uh support the guys that support us on the mayhem show so let's get into topic two now lp you brought this to my attention it's true it's true so here in pittsburgh uh we had a wonderful event this past weekend and that event is comic-con now i think comic-con is a bit of a it's, misnomer it's, nowadays it's steel city con actually yeah steel city con uh, how about you quietly fuck yourself <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, ruin my introduction? Uh, these conventions are no longer just about comics uh, as they once were. They are about all fandoms. They are all inclusive uh, nowadays, including the professional wrestling fandom. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel they've always had an undercurrent at these kind of events. And uh, this year's was no different. I picked up this gem, Sports Review Wrestling Predictions through 1998. Is that showing up? <laughs> yeah, it's right? showing up. That's showing up. Oh, no, it's real blown out. It's real bad. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Predictions through 1998. And I thought, well, that's pretty good. I wonder when it was published. 1988. Oh. So... 1998 uh, was a uh, was a great year, and it was a uh, lead up. You know, it's a uh, you know. I think in 1998 we were in the thick of the Attitude Era, if I'm not mistaken. Thick of the Monday Night Wars. Right, the Monday Night War, exactly, exactly. Uh, so I thought, I wonder if this uh, if this strange magazine that I've never heard of uh, could have predicted the madness that would take place. And I felt that uh, week by week we would go through these predictions and uh, find out together and discuss how right or wrong they are. We're gonna like kick. This. We're gonna kick things off with the uh, the very very first prediction here. You ready for this? By 1993, a major corporate entity, perhaps Coca Cola or MCA Telecommunications, will invest more 20 million. Wow, this is written poorly. Invest more than <laughs> $20 million into the NWA to make the wow. organization competitive with the WWF Ooh. on a marketing wow. and international level. As a result of the investment, the NWA will surpass the WWF in influence and talent roster wow. by 1995. Wow. Let's, let's now, get into it. No, 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 wait, wait. That's so, kind so of it's freaky accurate. Yeah, that is because that's WCW. That it's is WCW. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. What, what was MCA? MCA is the is it a movie company. Is it? Uh, I don't know that MCA still exists. But it probably you, like, not. You guys talk about it. Happened. I'll Google it. But no, that's I mean, <laughs> Turner would be the MCA or Coca Cola that dumped yeah. money into it. It became WCW, and mm -hmm. by 1998, they were beating, competing with WWE. And what year did they say <laughs> that? What year did they say they would become competitive? I they said ninety five. I think would that have been, that would have said that it would take been, place in ninety three and become competitive in ninety five. So ninety five would Hogan, have been like Hogan, right? Right. right? Would right. ninety five yeah. have been Hogan? Yeah, yeah. That's it. Oh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Damn. They had some time machines back then. So that yeah, is, they, that, that is, is impressive stuff. Pro wrestling Nostradamus. Yeah. <laughs> It's strange. Like I said, this was published in 1988, and it just goes to show you this was this was pre-internet. This was dirt sheets before dirt sheets were digital. <laughs> Kids, so can't can't be wrong all the time. That's right. That's right. What, what else you got in there? 
Oh, you want me to do more? We're oh, not yeah. Just gonna read. Oh, I, I, did, I didn't know the plan was one at a time. Or no. I, thought it was gonna, I thought we were going to do one a week. That is okay. We can read the next one. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, let's do a couple. And if we want to uh, continue, we can we can check in on this every week. Okay. That one was too easy. That one. <laughs> that one. Too easy. Shit. That was impressive. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So the next one is, is a little strange. By 1997, and I'm reading these verbatim. By 1997, Vince McMahon Jr.'s son... Sean McMahon will have assumed control of Oops. the WWF spurred by the success of the NWA through 1995 and 1996 McMahon will build the WWF into an international empire greater than his father or grandfather ever dreamed of in 1997 one of the television's television season's top 10 programs will be a primetime comedy drama featuring WWF stars. My father <laughs> simply thought too small was he when he was in charge. In charge, Sean will say. So here are the problems. <laughs> <laughs> is, is Sean his real name? No, it's Shane. No, it, is it is Shane. Shane. No, no, is it, is it Shane. actual Shane? He didn't just be like, well, I'll just call myself Shane for television. I, I'm going to look that up now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're all, we're all rushing to Wikipedia. Like I said, I, I think like 1988, they didn't have Wikipedia to double check these things. So That's I think true. it's just... <laughs> That's and plus, true, yeah. you already yes, yes, saw Shane. how great Shane that thing is Brand. written. So... I think it all just kind of comes Fuck it. His, hand. his name's Sean now. Sean. <laughs> just pointing out there's Shane, your name's Sean. <laughs> so here's the weird thing it's not that far off except it's not shane it's vince yeah yeah right right i, I they didn't really kind of count on the longevity of i mean the the drama the, the evening drama thing is weird but they have is an it? evening show that's in the top five and, for and, cable. and really if you think about it, this is in 1988 right so their idea of what a wrestling show could have been was probably based on the old NWA match, 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 right, match, right, promo, right. match, match. They probably didn't foresee a Vince Russo written um, segments, That's true. soap opera style that this may have been. So it did kind of happen. It did kind of happen in that it, it may be that the wrestling started taking on some of those more comedy, more drama aspects rather than just stay strictly a professional wrestling show. Hmm. Can I, I'm going to read the next one. <laughs> <laughs> that, good, that good, huh? This, this part goes a little insane. <laughs> Sean McMahon kills his dad, right? No, no, no. But before I read this, I'd like to remind you that it, it, it mentions WrestleMania 14. And WrestleMania 14 was the year that we had Mike Tyson, Steve Austin, and Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Having already built the WWF into an international empire, Sean McMahon will turn it into an empire of literally astronomical proportions in 1998 oh, no. by holding the WrestleMania 14 main event in space. What the hell? <laughs> yes. Two years Kevin later, Nash read this. Two years later. The United, I'm sorry, two years earlier, the United States will have established its first permanent manned space station in orbit, and the main event will be a cooperative venture with NASA, which will <laughs> be conducting extensive studies into the nature of uh, <laughs> nature and effects of weightlessness on athletic activities. Financial limitations will prevent the entire card from being held in space, as well as prevent any kind of crowd from viewing it live. <laughs> oh, thank God. All closed circuit and pay-per-view TV records will be broken, as fans pay up to upwards of $1,000 for a chance to see the event. <laughs> Fuck it, I, I would. I love the idea of Steve Austin versus Shawn Michaels in space. In space. space. I, I love With the idea Mike of Tyson in, in space. <laughs> Like, you son of a bitch. Oh. Pour beer in his mouth with gravity. <laughs> wow. No, forget wrestling. This guy had had the utmost confidence in our space program. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what? Yeah. I mean. Well, we I had mean, a moon base by, by uh, 96. Jeez. Jeez. I mean, I mean, it, you know, Ooh, combining two things that in 1988, or maybe later at least, that you would contest the realness of them. NASA and WWE. <laughs> um, depending on who you talk to. That's yeah. that's amazing. 
yeah. that's that, that yeah, was just I, like whew. I think that's a good oh, stop. Wow, the next, the next, the next that'd one. That'd be so crazy. A a runner in and, outer space. So, so this was a little experiment. We, how many do you have? How, how long's the article? Uh, let me let's uh, let's take a look. <laughs> <laughs> no one let's made a satellite head scissors joke. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> a six one nine in space. <laughs> Uh, go ahead and fill. Uh, but, okay. Uh, Bobby, well, Bobby has stuff. Bobby has stuff. I also have a wrestling magazine. He does. He wanted in on that. That's right. Um, um I got mine at uh, Cash and Culture. Okay. <laughs> um, two things I wanted to touch on. It's such here. a weird magazine-based uh, state. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's 2015. We've done almost 10 years of a podcast, and we've decided to talk about paper magazines yeah. that we found at a comic con <laughs> yeah, about exactly. pro wrestling. This is from winter 1994. Oh, okay. Wow. The first thing is news from the wrestling capitals, and the first city listed is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Oh. Damn right. Oh. <laughs> Oh, there's a train going by. What? You have a train? By? <laughs> what? No, that's wheels, I think. <laughs> oh, so, is it running through your living room? <laughs> What's that stupid train going over there? The uh, the the article here is by a man named Danny Tanner. No, 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 no. Stop. no. Seriously, right there, Danny Tanner. Oh my god. Is that Yokozuna? Oh. That looks like Yokozuna. That's Yokozuna. That's, the, that's not Danny Tanner. That's Yokozuna. The news from the wrestling capital is Yokozuna versus Mabel. <laughs> These two WWF behemoths went at it at the Civic Arena. And and the rap and light show from Mabel's manager, Oscar, stole the show. Oh, jeez. <laughs> there was plenty of pushing and shoving from both sides during the match. But Jim Neinhardt, of all people... <laughs> Help determine the final verdict. The end will come down to ringside and distracted Mabel as Yokozuna and Belly to Belly suplexed him for the pin. Other bouts, WWF World Champion Bret Hart defeated Owen Hart. Razor Ramon beat Intercontinental Champion Diesel by disqualification. And they go on to list other better matches than Yokozuna versus Mabel. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to another story. OJ, guilty or innocent, wrestlers speak out. <laughs> oh, you were instant. You were Wait, uh, first of all, name. Let's let's do a little game here. Okay. Name a wrestler, and we'll we'll say who if he thinks he's guilty or okay. innocent. Okay. Wait. This is this is um, a lo- this is a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Captain Lou Albano. Guilty. Innocent. Guilty. Yeah, Captain Lou's a loving man. He's in, he has to say he's innocent. Guilty. Captain Captain Lou's quote is, "Hope he's not guilty." <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all it's interesting. Says. That's, that's, that's kind of down the middle. That's not decisive. <laughs> all right, Terry. I, I love we have all these legal questions oh. when you came in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. By the guilty. way, I'm sta- I abstain. Oh. I abstain. So, yeah. <laughs> Terry Funk. That's a good one. Guilty. 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 Yeah. Terry Terry Funk's answer was he's definitely guilty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Steve Austin. Stunning Steve? Guilty. Stunning Steve Austin, yes. Guilty. Stunning Steve says innocent. Yeah, he's got to say innocent. Um, yeah, innocent. Lit. Stone Cold would say guilty. <laughs> well, Steve Austin, oh, Stunning Steve Austin also says he's guilty. Oh, wow. Mm. All right. <laughs> Jimmy Superfly Snooker. Oh, oh wow. man. Wow. That's, 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 he's wow. high, bro. Wow. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I, I posted this on Instagram. I this, I, I'm I'm going to back out on this one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, his, uh, his, 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 his response was, sorry, I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know his answer? His, his response was, uh, innocent, know. wipes brow nervously. <laughs> <laughs> and it reads. His, answer, his answer was, could be guilty, could not be guilty. <laughs> Did he end that That's, with brother? Brother. brother. Yeah. brother. It's an accurate statement. Favorite, I mean, my favorite one. All right. Paul E. Dangerously. Oh, good lord. Oh, oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait so he's he like, says, "I don't care if he's guilty or innocent. If they do fry OJ, they should air it on pay per view. I'll have a party of friends here to watch it with me. I wish, I wish I had a piece of on the buy rate." After the execution, we'll have a festival of all the naked gun movies. Wow. <laughs> now, now to be down to the real issue. This whole trial was a waste because it takes the public's eye away from the real important issue of the day, and that is 
when they when will they realize that nine one one is the world's greatest athlete? Wow. <laughs> the best part is Paul? okay. You Paul you like, Heyman. Of all, the, of all the previous ones you listed, those seem like ones that they could have just made up. They were yeah. like, he's either guilty or he's not guilty. That is like straight from Paul Heyman. Yeah. I have no Paul doubt Heyman, in my mind he said that. Paul Heyman has always been in character. He's <laughs> never not in character. Yeah, Somebody needs true. to tweet Paul Heyman and remind him that he made that statement. <laughs> yeah, Bobby, take a picture and send it to the main show account. Yes. Take, Listen, yes, while we're on this topic, there's uh, there, he is quoted in this magazine as well. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Could be guilty, uh, could be innocent. The, <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, the question was, um, question of the month is, how did you feel when your partner or ally double-crossed you? And he said, ooh, that Austin Idol has made me and Eddie Gilbert so mad. He refused to join our stable of champions even after we offered him a king's ransom. Then he got real bold and took cheap shots at both me and Eddie. So later... I decided to give that blonde buffoon a man's haircut. We ain't done with Idol yet either. As far as I'm concerned, he's nothing but yesterday's trash. Who do you think actually wrote that? <laughs> the, 19, the 1980s, where uh, where the bad guys uh, mostly talked like uh, superhero villains. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay, so so you got this. Bag. I came across some magazines myself this weekend. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming, did you? Um, so, uh, Troy Davis, referee uh, around the area. Uh, it was at IWC this weekend, and everybody's got their stuff uh, going on. And uh, he had these magazines he was trying to sell. And uh, I'm, I'm working on a project about really, really old school wrestling. And so it caught my eye, of course. First of all, of course, uh, Bruno San Martino. This is from 1969. Uh, the, the two worlds. Can I just worlds- say his pose right now? What's that? Yeah, this is a great pose. Yeah, Sword was a great pose. Was he bloody? No, no, he's not bloody in this one. But there's actually another one where he was bloody. Where somebody was bloody, and we thought it was like maybe uh, classy Freddy Blassie. Um, <laughs> but uh, by the way, uh, four pages of color Sam, Sam Martino and Sheik cage match photos. Four nice. pages of color photos. Look at that. Uh, but there was another one here. If I click the right way, uh, yep, this is the one I was showing you at lunch, LB. Um, what on earth? <laughs> wow. So you see that um, there's some sort of mace or something that he's holding over a girl, and this is a wrestling mag. It's called The Wrestler, a uh, big girl wrestling section loaded with exciting photos. And for this uh, very uh, weird photo, it looks like it's straight from a German German love shack. Uh, Girls love men who treat them rough, insists Paul Diamond. And there's <laughs> another one here on the side: uh, the startling confessions of a girl wrestling referee. Sometimes I get slapped. And there's something about Dory Funk Jr. in the corner for no reason. Um, <laughs> Dory Funk probably slapped her. Amazing. I wanted to look through them, but I was afraid they were going to fall apart in my hands. Um, it, it was pretty pretty fantastic. So, uh, guys, that was awesome. Uh, so, uh, on that note, if you have any weird magazines in your collection, actually, I <laughs> Weird wrestling magazines in your collection. <laughs> Can we clarify that? Let us know about them. Screen cap anything odd you find. I have some old like Pro Wrestling Illustrated uh, from about the same era, probably LB, um, that, uh, that, that that I obtained. Um, so I might look through those and see if there's anything weird in there. I know that's how I discovered War Games. Was it was the one where like Abdullah Butch was in there, and I think he was high in a mm-hmm. hammer in his tights or something. Yeah, I yeah, still like, never. I should. Gimmick, yeah. I should go watch the match. Because I can now for nine ninety nine. Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've never watched it, but I still like this mm-hmm. thing fascinated me. One, there was something other than WWF mm-hmm. because it was like I got WF magazine, that's all I had on TV. I didn't have cable. And then it was like not only that, there's barbaric, holy crap, the war games, bloody thing was happening that mm-hmm. I got to tell read about mm-hmm. and see in black and white, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and and seeing <laughs> that there's a whole nother wrestling world out there. So yes, yeah, felt so dirty. <laughs> I don't know if it's because it's black and white or not, but anyways. <laughs> Sword, Mad Mike is sitting there reading his WoW magazine it's, while you're talking. WoW How magazine? Wait, wait, wait. The, the old World of Wrestling magazine? Well, if, if Wheels is going to call me out on it, yes. Um, <laughs> well, you, you asked if you have weird wrestling I have, magazines. I, I, dude, I have a few of those. I love that magazine. I had a subscription to WoW magazine, Sorg. I, I can't remember. I, I got um, a bunch of them. I don't know if I subscribed or not. 
I just opened to a random section called Shoots and Angles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, aren't the you first, clever? The first topic on this page, lawsuit targets China. Hmm. 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 I'm not even sure what it was about, but like they got the WWE, WWF New York sign for Times Square. Oh, oh I remember uh, that. Mm-hmm. A study links wrestling with bad behavior. <laughs> <laughs> in, another, in another news, water is wet. So. <laughs> but, and, of, and of course, probably my favorite ad in the entire magazine, 67% of women say they are unhappy with the size of their lover's <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that was the other thing we were looking through that wait a minute who's the broad in the in the ad <laughs> I'm not sure I'm assuming Missy Hyatt <laughs> there was an ad for wow. there was an ad for American Gladiators magazine in my magazine oh no <laughs> well that's the last thing I, I think like your your wow magazine there that was around the time when ECW I think was on TNN so it was like at the height of yeah. whatever it was mm-hmm. WWE WWF, WCW. I think maybe the Russo was going over WCW. It was like, like WCW was on the decline, was still kind of big. Mm-hmm. And I think the same people did like ECW magazine too mm-hmm. at the time. It, it was like all color, you know. Again, you know, versus the dirty pro wrestling illustrated. I never bought them because they're black and white. That's you know whatever mm-hmm. you know versus WWF magazine. And then this was just big glossy cardstock cover, cardstock foil stance cover mm-hmm. you know just like the tops cards you oh, know absolutely and hey, it, hey uh do you guys remember shakira of world Re- of world championship wrestling because oh, apparently we need a whole full page spread <laughs> figuring out what she's up to in, t- yeah. in august of 2001 yes we do wow <laughs> those are the days i'm going to guess not much besides this article so height of her it, career so let's well, actually, uh, there's a really cool thing in here on Regal about his uh, drug rehab. Oh. oh, yeah. So I mean, it's not it's not all schlock. Like, there's some actual good. No, stuff. there was good stuff in there. There was seriously good stuff in there. A lot of those. Uh, I mean, at a. I don't know if anybody here has been to the uh, to the WrestlePlex at PWX, but they have a huge uh, library of old magazines. Really? That I mean, from and I mean, some of them are more recent. They're WWE or the. Do you remember the Raw magazine? Yeah. They just have just the Raw. Mm-hmm. But I mean, there was old Pro Wrestling Illustrated, Inside Wrestling that goes back to San Martino so, so era. Do they have like a like a Pro Wrestling library down well, there. Well, the, it's in on? the it's in the uh, it's in the gift shop, the gimmick shop, and uh, like they've got. Eight by tens, DVDs. Wait, they have a gift shop. There? Yes, I, I, I don't think I've been there since the place opened. I went to like yeah. the first show there, and I haven't. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I haven't had time to get back since. They have a, That's but they awesome. have a little shop that I mean, it sells like, it sells like DVDs and eight by tens and stuff like that. Then it also sells like light swords and uh, those glow sticks stuff for the kids for the show. And then on the back wall, they have all these old magazines. Wow. And you know, at, at first glance, if if you don't know what you're looking for, it looks like ah, oh, it's a bunch of WWE magazine, but you look through it and you're like, oh, "There's some gems back here." Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, there most of them are in, um, you know, in plastic and are protected. And, and some of them I don't even want to open because they look like, you know, like you said, you look like yeah, yeah. they might fall apart in your hands. But there's some that, very cool stuff. I started going through it and I felt like some of the pages were loose. I'm like, I, he's trying to sell them for like twenty bucks a pop, and I'm like, here, I'm not gonna mess with this pop. And- yeah, pop. There you go. <laughs> um, but uh, but uh, but I'm very interested in, in, in getting some of those for. Um, I, I guess as an aside, I'm working on a project. If you have anything really old, especially around Pittsburgh wrestling, uh, I'm interested. Uh, just mm-hmm. email the Wrestling Mayhem Show email address or Twitter or something. Uh, that's the good times at Wrestling Mayhem Show, and uh, I'd like to talk to you here and uh, coming up here. Maybe I'll go down and see what they got down there. Absolutely, and talk with them as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, but anyways, on that note, hey, thanks everybody. Uh, th- this was this is actually a really fun article. Thank you, thanks for bringing this up, LB. Yeah, you got it. Uh, there is much more where that came from. Awesome. I think we'll check in on that. Maybe that'll be a new kind of mini hey, segment. Hey, sure. There's an ad for RF video in here. For what? For RF video. RF video. You've been around forever, man. Wow. <laughs> What could you get on VHS back then? Anyways, on that note, um, uh, for more recent wrestling, please check please check out PittsburghWrestling.com and IndieWrestling.us. We got a whole bunch of fun stuff, even including this past weekend's uh, Night of the Superstars 4 just released on digital download today. You can go check that out, uh, including Tommy Dreamer versus Rhino in a fun, fun, actual Extreme Rules match. Um, uh, uh, Kevin Nash was a part of big six-man tag, uh, as well as Gang... Okay, yeah, it's Super Ooh. Shredder on one side of a six-man tag, and you had Gangrel on the other side. 
it was a fun time. And actually, I, Kevin Nash was into it. Like, I mm-hmm. figured, oh, he'll come in, do a hot tag, he'll boot some people in the face of the head. No, mm-hmm. he was in the match. I've heard a lot of people a say that bit. they they were pleasantly surprised, but when, you know, on some independent shows that, you know, of what they got out of Kevin Nash. Yeah. So I, yeah. And I mean, I've heard that oh, before. Yeah. yeah. It was real cool to everybody, you know, it, it, you know, for guys that just was on the Hall of Fame, you know, mm-hmm. completely cool to see him on there, and it, it was a really good, fun time. And uh, Gangrel, Gangrel's looking good. I haven't seen Gangrel since one of those early VOW shows mm-hmm. when I think Sabu was on it down in Uniontown. Yeah. And uh, he even looks better than he did then. I uh, saw him at Remix a couple, at, a couple remixes ago. He was at the ago. Hall of Fame, too. That's right. He was out in the crowd in the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm awesome um but no really fun show rick flair is there and rick flair is, is there uh gives a speech at the at the top uh, of the show uh, a lot of fun time we'll talk about that a little bit more on the indie mayhem show later tonight uh that's episode 65 if you want to check that out if you're checking us out later uh but you can get the digital download for 9.99 nope that's not it <laughs> that's chris larusso check him out at chris larusso on uh the twitters as well and uh actually we have some of your stuff on here because we do have vicious outcast wrestling oh awesome so uh you can check out look at look up chris larusso's matches on there mm-hmm. and pick mm-hmm. those up there you go at mm-hmm. uh pittsburgh wrestling.com also best of gregory iron was just released in the prime cuts series we have the digital downloads you can get dvds at joe uh as well as is it out? Very soon there will be a Hardcore Legacy released. That's uh, little scene matches from ECW alumni at one of, I can't remember the name of it, but it's one of the venues they used to go to. Um, was it the Dome? The Queens, maybe? Oh. In Queens, um, Gee, I thought it was going to be the Pittsburgh venue. No, it, it's not a Pittsburgh venue. Yeah, um, it, it's footage all from this one venue that they used to go to, not like UCW Arena or something, like another one of the regular ones. Uh, I think out mm-hmm. east, okay. but uh, it's actually going to be commentated by Joe Dombrowski and Shane Douglas. Oh, that's very cool. So, and it, there's a lot of big names on there. The who's who of ECW. So all that's going to be over there, IndieWrestling.us, and we're mm-hmm. looking to redesign uh, IndieWrestling.us too, so you have a separate kind of experience than everything else going on at Sorgatron Media. So, mm-hmm. uh, so we'll be right back with LB and the big question. This is the Aaron Sheik. You listen to the Mayhem Show. Iran, number one. Russia, number one. USA, ah, top. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're back. Of course, we listen. There's no actual break there. You just listen to Iron Sheik or somebody saying, blah, blah, American number one. Now I'm going to have to use that one um, in post. Uh, but now it's time for the big question with the DJist of DJs, Papa Lunchbox. Yes, sir, I've been experimenting with changing my name. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, yeah. Papa Lunchbox. I like the idea of Lunchbox Prime, maybe. You're never really a DJ, you know? You're just kind of a guy with a microphone. There was a time when that was relevant. Now it's not. We were way too reflective tonight. It's yeah, that magazine. True. Let's yeah. talk about wrestling. My question to the group is, I was uh, we, we talked about this a little bit at lunch, um, about, uh, I, I don't remember exactly who we, it was, uh, or, nor do I care. It was a nice um, time. We dined outside. I felt very yuppie at that point. Yuppie? Jesus, Sorg. Nothing wrong with being yuppie. It's like, I don't know a line for that. Um, I felt like I was nice. in a Facebook movie. It was great. Anyways, back to wrestling. To? What did you have for lunch? I forget. Oh, it was a barbecue chicken sandwich, and there's a whole bunch of crap they put on there that I didn't understand. Oh, yeah, that was right. Yeah, and I had a fish sandwich that was bland as shit. Don't get the fish sandwich at Diamond Market, kids. You're wasting your money, time, and taste buds. <laughs> Welcome to the food cast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, had tuna, I had tuna in the bag. God damn it! <laughs> big question. What did you have last today? <laughs> what did you have? Uh, no. Okay. Um, the point is, we were talking about um, uh, indie wrestlers, and and um, somebody was uh, on TNA, and they lost to somebody on TNA. And I started thinking about um, what that means in the career of a professional wrestler. So let's say you have a professional wrestler who works the independence and hi wheels. <laughs> wheels is making faces at me. <laughs> He's holding um, up your feed with you on it. <laughs> oh good. I'm oh, sorry. His, his I was behind the Jesus Christ. Um Okay. Is winning on an indie promotion more or less beneficial to your career? than losing on a television promotion. Mm. Uh, add some context to this, please. 
I don't have any more. Time. What do you want? <laughs> what do you mean? No, what this, do you mean? This is the, the I mean, we were talking about uh, the extension of like Cesaro and Kid losing to Randy Orton last night, a main eventer. I, you know, I believe it kind of raises their stock on the show, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like that's one side of this argument, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And but but I can't I I genuinely I cannot remember who we were talking about, but there was somebody from the was Indies that came Zima? up to TNA. Was it Zima? Because he loses on TNA all the time, and I'm guessing he wins in the Indies. Mike, were you at lunch with me and Sorg today? No, I'm just asking. Interesting, <laughs> Sorg. Who were we talking about? I can't remember to be quite honest. <laughs> <laughs> were you talking about Daniel Bryan or something? No, it, fucking. Were you listening? Someone came up from the Indies. <laughs> Why can't we just answer the question, Sorg? I was actually your waiter. And I <laughs> Bobby, I'm sorry I stiffed you on the tip that you suck dick at waiting. I do. I dropped everything. <laughs> hmm. I didn't stiff him. I tipped him a little bit. So generally you're saying, you know, anyway, it, 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 it's not it, the first time you've stiffed the point, Bobby. The point is, is it more beneficial to win in an indie promotion off television than it is to lose – in a promotion that's mm-hmm. on television. And when does that change, if ever? I want to let Chris go last because he probably knows the answer to this. <laughs> I, don't, I, mean, I don't think I there mean, is a... He's the one that's that's been probably won in the Indies and lost on the TV the most out of any of us, right? I mean... Right? Out of any of us? Yes. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who the hell did you ever beat? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, all right. Uh, but we'll go to you last because you have the real answer. Uh, the rest of us will pontificate. Uh, Eamon, you're the closest thing to a wrestler amongst the rest of us. Oh, Jesus, no, I'm not. <laughs> uh, You're closer to it. I commentate on wrestling. More. Yes. Um, or I comment on wrestling. Uh, but I think it's it's hard to say because I think there's a little it, – it, it's not as easily defined. Uh, the closest thing I can think of is – I like Sword mentioned the whole uh, Randy Orton versus Kid and Cesaro on Raw. Personally, in my opinion, I don't think it really benefits Cesaro and Kid. Uh, I don't think it. Be- I, I, in the case of the tag team champions, of no matter who they are, losing to a singles guy, I don't think that's good. If, if you're supposed to be like the best tag team, but you could also look in contrast to Dolph Ziggler versus Neville uh, from from Raw, which I felt they've been doing a really amazing job with using Neville and and making him seem important and seem big, and he's not been winning all the time. And that's this okay. This isn't what I asked at all. I, but I know. But I'm, I'm asking to... about indie wrestlers. Specific. I, I don't know if it plays into indie wrestling. wrestlers. Wrestlers who are wins off of TV better than losing on TV. Wins on the that's, I way. got this. I, I I don't think. Hold on, hold on. Riz that. has the answer to all of our problems I mean, here. I, I'm no, no sword. Um, <laughs> How's Andre doing? Uh, he's he's still up here. He's very he's very balancy today. Um, no, I like I honestly think now it's beneficial to that superstar to lose on television because you know what you, that superstar has their own store that they can sell shit to and earn money. That guy now has hey meet. The guy who was on WWE TV. Sean Stasiak? <laughs> you were actually close. I was going to say Stan Stansky. Um, oh. Like, like Stan Stansky, nobody knew who the hell he was until Ryback beat the shit out of him. Yeah. Uh, Norv and uh, Dewey. Norv, Norv, Norv Furnham and Dewey. Uh, what? Barnes. Barnes. We didn't know, I I mean we didn't know who the hell they were until they got job to by uh EC three. Colin Delaney. Uh, Colin Delaney. Thank Look you, at him now. But now now with the internet and everybody having that having that guide to your sh- shop where you can get money from just people who saw you do things. Blue pants. Uh, it, it it's just now it, it's it's a good time to be a 
quote unquote jobber in professional wrestling. Because now you have that uh, <clears throat> indie cred of being on television, even even as a rosebud, mm-hmm. believe it or not. Uh, that's my answer, though. Eamon was sending me pictures of rosebuds last night. Apparently. Whoa, <laughs> what? Wait, um, what? That's yeah, the one girl that was on rosebuds. Oh, but, uh, but now I kind of get what you're saying. Like, And I agree. I, I mm. think... It, it, we can't look at it in a case of like a like a Cesaro or Tyson Kidd or Neville, but looking at like like if you have a, like a niche thing and you're sort of relatively unknown, the internet latches onto that, and you know, P D Williams, like uh, sure. no no like P D Williams, Jarrell Clark, half of the X Division was made up of guys like that back in the day. Like they would lose on TV a lot, but if you got them for an indie show, that was the big get. Those are guys like, that were all over. Be- those are the guys that were all over IWC here. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like one precludes the other. If mm-hmm. you are losing match after match on TV, mm-hmm. people know who you are, and they're going to bring you in for their indie show if they can, yeah. right. where you are the big name and you are going over. I'm, I'm, like, sure, I'm sure Leva Bates is getting a few uh, bookings as blue pants these days. Mm-hmm. So The uh, one we didn't mention, Sorg, mm-hmm. Asylum. Oh, Asylum well, being he didn't the really doctor. Ha- he didn't really have Not a match. Even... He was he was the doctor. But yeah. I mean, that's you know, but I don't know how. I, I, I would like to know how if, if if that like significantly increased like it made me know who he was. was. Well, yeah, yeah but, but, I'm, but... I'm, I'm, I mean, on a significant. Okay, like, uh, uh, Wheels. What what are your thoughts on this? Strange enough, I was just thinking about that. Um, just getting even the clarifications of the answers. I thought easily. Um, Strange enough, Pittsburgh's own Ryan Mitchell against Kozlov, even though it may have been a minute and yeah, it was like on SmackDown, right? Yeah, it was on SmackDown and everything. Yeah, he may not have been like the biggest winner, but he traveled all over the country and overseas Mm -hmm. because of that. So, Mm -hmm. strange enough, one of our own, Ryan Mitchell and even Corey Graves. Yeah, look at him now. Um, LB, did you want to answer before we go to Chris here? Um, I, I, sure. Yes. Uh, I think that, um, that, uh, there is a time when, you know, um, losing on television is better for your stock than, uh, winning off television. And, uh, because that losing on television feeds the other thing. And then the other thing gets big enough that you're on television enough that losing on television becomes the bad thing and you have to start winning on television to raise your stock. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a process. Okay. Uh, Chris, what do you think about all this? Um, well, oddly enough, I have never lost on national television. I have one national television appearance to my name and the record books will show that the decade and Chris LaRusso uh, were victorious in Nashville, Tennessee. So, oh, nice. <laughs> uh, that being said, I was promptly dropped on my head by BJ Whitmer immediately afterwards. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, w- w- as you're talking about this, I'm thinking about something that um, uh, a independent wrestler, and he's also he's on Ring of Honor. He's a trainer and and coach and mentor to a lot of uh, wrestlers. Uh, Brutal Bob Evans, one mm-hmm. time told me he was telling me about maximize your minutes. Mm-hmm. And that any opportunity to be on national television and to be in front of that many eyes is a golden opportunity. What you do with that time is 100% up to you. Um, you mentioned Colin Delaney, and Colin maximized his minutes. He was told to go, I believe it was the great Kali. Was that who he, his <laughs> initial... <laughs> that it? no I'm, I'm it's 100 percent serious i think that was I don't the think first that first... was his first one but it, w- it was one of but the it su- was one of um uh, i'm not sure but whatever his first appearance was he performed so well in that very very limited role mm-hmm. that it ended up getting him a full-time job and and really you know was was a a you know keystone to his career um so when those opportunities come around, oh, go ahead. He, he was actually first beaten by Shelton Benjamin. Uh, Big Daddy V. Kali came on, came up a little bit later, actually. Okay, okay. So Mark Henry, then 
Collie Kane, like he he had he ran the whole line of them. So. Yeah. Regardless, I mean, there there's these situations where how many people um, have been rosebuds or have been, um, you know, enhancement guys or whatever, and are never seen or heard from ever again. Mm-hmm. But then you do have a situation like like a Colin Delaney who mm-hmm. is able to take that very small role and maximize his minutes. Mm-hmm. And um, I found, I mean, personally. It's a very minor way to 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 measure uh, awareness, but after I was on uh, TV, my Twitter followers went up, my Facebook followers went up. Um, I did see a noticeable increase in in some interest. I saw a noticeable increase in some pay mm-hmm. uh, at a couple places. So um, the exposure, I think, it, it is always very good. Um, as far as having those those awesome wins or awesome, I, I won't say wins because I'm not as big on wins and losses, especially in indie wrestling, meaning as much. But those big moments, those big matches on the indies, um, and they're great. And you know, you can have amazing matches and really entertain the crowd. But sort of the if a tree falls in the woods, it doesn't make a sound if no one's there to hear it. Mm-hmm. If you have these amazing matches or these amazing victories on the independents. Um, but it's in front of a hundred people, you know, in, in West Virginia, you know, how useful is that? Well, you can get a tape of it or, or, you know, and, and a lot of places do have much greater exposure. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know IWC has digital download, PWX is on, uh, you know, a local television. A- AIW is really good about if something really big happens, it's, you hear about it. It's on yeah. the internet. You know, some of those are very social media conf- you know mm-hmm. conscious you know uh, uh you know i know great stuff that iwc we picked up a couple of things from the weekend mm-hmm. and i was amazed to see so someone already had like a thousand download or yeah. a thousand views i think the uh the, cool. there was a video from i from night of uh was it night of legends night of champ night of superstars, night of this superstars. Past weekend? yeah uh, that was on uh sb nation um uh, you know, oh, the or, kid, the yeah, white the guy, kid. yeah, yeah, and yeah. that had like five thousand views when I saw it. That's that's crazy, and that yeah. was a fan video. Yeah, and those so. are and those are always great things. But as great as the exposure of an AIW or an IWC or even a mm-hmm. Beyond or something, the number of eyes who see that versus the number of eyes that are watching even Ring of Honor television, let alone Monday Night Raw, I think that the the it's far more beneficial to be in as front of as many eyes as humanly possible because. Again, you can maximize your minutes, and mm-hmm. uh, you know you can you can look you can look pretty good uh, taking an ass whooping, and who knows how things can build from there. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's... Yeah, I mean the Hardy Boys spent a whole couple of years mm-hmm. on WWE as jobbers, getting mm-hmm. their asses handed to them. Until they're actually just given a shot, just because they kept going to every show. But they were there, they were on TV, and they were in the back, and people would get to know them after a while, and mm-hmm. that generates opportunities. Absolutely. You know, one of the big things I push is you make opportunities. Absolutely. And any chance like that, like I know, you know, guys in your line, like mm-hmm. I imagine you, you went to the ROH camps. I know you were on like the, uh, one of those early, like Fresh Prospects show they had out. And well, like, we no, um, I had done like the, that. I had done a couple, uh, a couple of dark matches. I had done the mm-hmm. dark in Wheeling. I'd done the dark in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, uh, a future of honors, what you're talking about. Future no, of honors, no, yeah. I, um, I didn't get, cause we haven't gotten to future three yet. We've only had two future of honors shows, mm-hmm. but, um, I, I'll use actually, this makes me think of something. I'll be quick about this. Cause I know I'm kind of rambling. Um, one of the things they taught us at the, the ring of honor camps is, um, to make how to maximize one of the things to maximize your minutes, how to to make everything look good. Imagine that you get called to be an extra at Raw, and they tell you, okay, you're a security guard, you got to run in, and you got to punch Brock Lesnar once. <laughs> you get one punch. You can crack Brock Lesnar in the face once. He's then going to pick you up and F five you into the third row. Yeah, but that's what your job is. How good is that punch going to be? That's going to be the greatest punch you have ever thrown in your entire life. You and get to punch a UFC champion. Yeah, <laughs> once. But that's the that's your only spot. That's all we're letting you do. That's yeah. the only thing that we're going to let you do on the show. Yeah. You would you would make sure that that was the best punch that you ever threw. And, you know, I try and tell that to 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 younger guys and to to people um, at the PWX training school, do everything. 
mm-hmm. like it's the only thing you're going to get to do on the show. If you have to go out and in three minutes get your ass handed to you, by God, that is the best ass whooping that this crowd will have ever seen. Mm-hmm. And um, and to make everything a- as important and as significant as humanly possible. And I think, you know, to circle back to Colin, I think that's what he did. He made that very small thing and he did it so, 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 so well that, you know, you know, was a rocket up his, uh, you know, rocket up his ass, and and mm-hmm. his career took off. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, he's doing great things with IWC, and they actually rekindled that little bit between Dreamer and, see, yeah. and Colin uh, back mm-hmm. in January, and 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 uh, you know, and they're doing great, mm-hmm. great stuff. Um, and I, I think it's a matter of time before he ends up somewhere else again. Mm-hmm. You know, somewhere else with three letters. You know, mm-hmm. uh, on TV. So, uh, and I look forward to that. You know, for any of these guys. You know. Mm-hmm. So, all right, uh, did everybody go around here? If you have any thoughts on this, hit us up on Twitter, hashtag WMS Big Question. Uh, this week, uh, if you respond to this one, we're actually going to give you a copy of that show we were talking about, Night of the Superstars 4, digital download. Uh, again, uh, tweet us, follow at Mayhem Show on Twitter. Tweet us with the hashtag uh, WMS Big Question and let us know the answer to the question uh do you think it's better to lose on tv or to win big in the indies uh and uh hope we can have some more discussion on that we'll read your tweets here next week on the air in the meantime we do have a little bit of response uh from last week's big question do 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 is i pull them up over here somebody give me some hold music this is the indie mayhem show notes that's why i can't find it (laughs) damn it Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, last hey, week, hey, baby. last week we were talking about uh, <laughs> transparency. If the WWE was 100% transparent, transparent like real sports, and Gabriel actually emailed us in. He says, I think if wrestling business, uh, if the wrestling business was transparent like the ESPN makes sports, it would make the WWE the most recognizable product on the planet! Exclamation mark, by the way. Uh, you take what ESPN has done for NFL, NBA, soccer, etc., and times that by 100. All those sorts are uh, separate. When you're in wrestling, it's one category. So pretty much it would blow up bigger than the Beatles. Huh. Yeah. And we would also be subject to all types of wrestling worldwide on a huge scale. Second part of the question, you guys would prosper because we asked what would happen to us as a podcast if this change in pro wrestling happened on the big scale. Um, you guys would prosper because it would force you to step up and be even more creative. You guys are creative enough to answer the challenge. Oh, thank you, Gabriel. Uh, so he'll be getting a copy of IWC's Best of 2014 that we released last week on Pittsburgh Wrestling dot com let us know your answers and uh and we'll hook you up as well to the big question so uh thank you all uh so uh real quick uh support supporting indie wrestling as we talk about the indie mayhem show and and this podcast and everywhere else uh go to pro wrestling com slash wrestling or wms i'm sorry and while you're there you know go throw a shirt of ours in the in the in your cart uh by the great alex cars designs out there in the long beach california hooking us up with some great great stuff over here but while you're at it check out some friends of the show uh you know friends like dj zima ion is on there thank you thank you i thought of you when he did that in the ring on on saturday night um i by by the way him and evan or keep calling evan born matt seidel was was pretty good um guys like aj styles guys like uh joey ryan who's who's tearing up out there the new stores for mick foley a lot of great shirts i was just checking those out uh, on the intermission here on the show uh adam pierce ahmed johnson come on my favorite leader um and and all kinds of uh, great do, great people do but, i have to mention the stevie night heat shirt that i just see just saw right now stevie night heat if you're down with the Grado uh, uh, craziness going on. Uh, friend of the show, Gregory Iron, who we just put out the best of DVD for him on the Prime Cuts, of course, is on here. And he's got, oh, uh, Riz, you pointed out a shirt that he has over there. Or Wait, was which it, one? Or, does him or Zach have this one? There's a Perfect Strangers oh, yeah. shirt with uh, Zach Gowan and Gregory Iron. <laughs> Oh, dressed that, as the that, perfect that changes there's zach awesome without shirt. the leg and everything it's the best is the best so um and side note can somebody please re re-invite will please uh to, the, to the hangout we nope. got a little bit of a tech issue there no he's You're got done. he had a good question bring him back uh, but start nope. off pro wrestling, pro wrestling tees.com slash wms pick up a shirt and pick up some from uh just supporting wrestling indie wrestling all kinds of stuff. Tugboat. I just saw that in the in the monitor. Tugboat's over there with shirts. I think I think he has Shockmaster shirts actually. Oh, good. Over there. Good. I'm glad. 
why not, man? Why not? Yeah. He was at WrestleCon the year I went to New York as the Shockmaster because they had a gimmick. We could buy a ticket for the gimmick wing. And I think it was like him <laughs> and Mantar and maybe the Boogeyman was wow. there. I, I'd pay is that sad, ticket. Is it sad that he pretty much only does those things? It's not as sad. No, shock, good. As the no. Shockmaster. No. And not no. sad at Good all. that he's you getting know, paid for it. Yeah. Money. It, it, I know. I know I'm, I'm not saying he's sad, but like, as. Like he was tugboat. Like I'm assuming tugboats. Like yeah. he was tycoon but, too. But but, but Shockmaster is a meme, man. They, yeah. They didn't I, build a top ten list. I mean, help me out. Like, I, I always have this conversation. Oh, hold on, hold on. I, help I me tried out. with tugboat turned on Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Wow. I was the we all did, man. We all did. Of all time. It, well, we mm. all did. Um, I mean, I, I'm happy when any wrestler can find a way to make money from this. If it's I, I, Shockmaster, I, I if it's you know, I I, I don't cry Absolutely. for Corey Graves for having to retire from wrestling because he's on there. He's got a show on the network. Mm -hmm. Anybody, mm -hmm. especially any of those guys, getting a WWE paycheck. Absolutely, I think is worthwhile. Absolutely. I'm I mean, just saying, Bobby would probably love to be talked about. Well, there's <laughs> that too. To that's too. I would cry. But Chris, you were saying I was saying, you know, the the only two real things in wrestling are the money and the miles. And if you can find some way to turn what we do cuz so many of us do it for nothing, mm -hmm. you know, or or go into the red to 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 do this. If you can find a way to to make some money and to to make some memories uh, you know, more power to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. All right, so let's go into the last couple wrap-up things here for the show. Um, let's first touch on, uh, let's pop it up here. Uh, Mike, let me know what's going on Impact Wrestling. Uh, Are we the I like how the, every week this starts out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, so apparently TNA... Uh, we're going to have a big tag team tournament. Okay, that's fine. Uh-huh. Um, no one told us this. It's just they happen to... You the fan, you mean? No, the Hardys came out and said, So, we're all excited about this big tag team tournament. This is a, almost an hour and a half into the show. <laughs> no one had mentioned it. Huh. Not, not, not Josh Matthews, not Taz, not Jeremy Borash, not SoCal Val. Or Christy Hemi, or God. No one, no one mentioned it, so they just assumed we knew what was going on. Uh, we didn't. There was no message from the burning bush. Oh, I wish they had a burning bush that just spit out matches and information. Wow, wasn't that Christy Hemi? Oh, no! no! Bobby. He's a Bobby well played, now. sir. Bobby. Well played. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wow, Bobby oh. points. Well, that's why he didn't make that joke. I know. I had to pick up in his steed. Uh, uh, all right, but um, so they they told us some of the teams are gonna be in this, and apparently the way this tag team tournament is going to work is there's going to be four tag team matches, and the winners of each of these matches are going to be put in an ultimate X match, and this is all supposed to happen in one night. So these are gonna be super long matches, um. And it's most of the teams you'd expect. You got the Bromans. You have the Revolution um, with James Storm teaming with Koya for some reason. So that's going to be botchtastic. Uh, you got the Hardys. Uh, and then EC3 comes out. And I said, oh, this might make this more interesting. And then he said his partner's going to be Bram. Way less interesting. And then Mr. Anderson comes out and says he's teaming with the X Division champion, because why the fuck would we have him wrestle X Division title matches? Uh, there's just a lot of shit going on with it. Also, uh, with with that side note, Mike, because um, I, I vaguely follow TNA. Like, I don't watch Impact, but I try to keep up. I don't blame you. Um, who the hell is Jay Rios? Yeah, that uh, that's the other thing I was gonna get to. I was like, one, T. Gray Uno is apparently still around, and yeah. two, he's teaming with a mass wrestler, but I don't think they've ever introduced him. T. Gray Uno has not been on television, I think, since they got to Destination America. That was in January, so apparently he still works there. Uh, I don't know who the other guy is. 
I don't really care. They didn't promote it. They didn't even say, hey, guys, don't forget, T. Gray Uno is also in this match. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, going to be a little weird. And also, we, we got to meet Drew Galloway's running buddies. Like, we were supposed to know who they were. I hey, didn't. Hey, I, Camacho's one of those running buddies. Exactly my point. NXT superstar Camacho. <laughs> yeah, apparently it's Camacho and the other half of Deuce and Domino. Fine. What happened to S.A. Rios? <laughs> no <Yeah>. one knows. <laughs> the no question knows. nobody is asking. Uh, that wasn't even in my WoW magazine from August 2011. <laughs> uh, but, um... And just as uh, the Uprising, stupid name with dumb Nexus colors, uh, went against the Beatdown Clan, we got the return of Homicide. So, yay, more faction war. Um, Other than that, TNA, they had a world title match again, Mm -hmm. I think for like the third week in a row, which, you know, doesn't devalue your belt at all. Yeah. Eric Young beat down Bobby Lashley, so apparently Lashley's having contract disputes, I'm guessing. Uh, it, TNA, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. Like, I think they're just going to... They keep calling Lashley the penultimate world champion, which means Kurt Angle's holding that belt until the company dissolves. I don't think he, he knows that's what it means, but mm. TNA's just a hot mess. You know, there was some interesting... I, I... Oh, and speaking of a hot mess... Uh, Eamon, you told me to look for this, and I almost fast-forwarded through it because I thought it was a commercial. Um, <laughs> apparently, there are new knockouts coming to TNA. Um, Jade? Bobby. Yeah, mm-hmm. who, who, you Bobby. know, we know, we know who Jade is. Jade Mia, is Mia, Mia, Yuma, Mia Yuma is fantastic. I don't know about this. Oh, Jade. yes. <laughs> um, I, I highly recommend you guys look for the commercial, the, uh, promo for them online. It's a commercial. It's a commercial. It looks like a commercial you would see at 3 a.m. on Comedy Central. Oh, I know that commercial. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it like a 900 like number commercial? Eight. It looks like a commercial for weare18.com. <laughs> it really, <laughs> really, really does. So, wow. Bobby, you may want hey, to get Hey, you know what? If that's what gets people wait, excited wait, wait. next to Amish Haunting. Was that again? We are 18. <laughs> no, com. don't Google that. <laughs> no, do not. <laughs> Do not. Yeah, I don't want to be associated oh with that. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, live reactions are great. Guys. <laughs> that was did you just, wait, did you just, um, just pull it up? <laughs> no, I uh, actually did not pull that up. Google the, the Jade promo video. I, I'll have to do oh, that geez. later tonight. So, so yeah. I, okay. Mia Yim is very good, by the way. Yeah, she just, is. Yeah, she's so, awesome. I mean, yeah. Oh, I'm not saying she isn't, but the promo video... Oh, they're doing boy. weird things with her apparently then. They're stabbing dolls in the head, but they're also dressed like in sexy attire and doing odd posing. And they're give, just, oh, I mean, oh, I give, doll, give dolls a chance or whatever. Oh my god, they're 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 the doll for, they're the doll from Blood Oh, Blood. they're the dollhouse. That's what they're called. Yeah. They're called the dollhouse. Oh, right. which oh they're the I doll think there's from a copyright problem there. Is that is that like a reference to the show or I I hope not. <laughs> They're managed by Eliza I'm, Dushka. I'm guessing Joss Whedon had nothing to do with this. Um, wow. So, okay, so, I mean, I had, I, one, I was excited to see that one of the featured matches on Friday was DJ well, Zima Ion. Or, and, I, I will give you a link, because I just found it. You just found the thing. Okay, we'll look at that in a moment. It's 31 seconds. We can play the whole thing. No, we should, No, we can't. Well, I, actually, I don't we know, because like, we Copyright. used to get, we used to get pulled well, for we, their you stuff. You can play a tiny bit of it where they're licking a lollipop. Mm. Oh. All right, we'll, we'll uh, take a look at that. Mm. Um, if somebody see if they can invite that email address that uh, we'll put in there, please. Uh, right. Okay, uh, but uh, I saw that D- Dima Ion was actually featured against Davy Richards, which is a match I want to see. You know, it was a great it. match. It was it a good was, match. I don't, and I'm not especially a big fan of Davy Richards. No, no, and but that's not for his in ring work. Personally, somebody's dinging. Holy crap! Um, Ding. But uh, no, I got to talk catch up with Zima actually uh, Saturday at at uh, Meadville. Um, oh, and, uh, and I was talking about that. He, he says, uh, you know, he had a lot of fun with that, and hopefully they, they'll do a little bit more than him just being the guy hanging with bromance uh, from the sounds of it. And uh, and I asked, like, well, how, how's everybody adjusting? Because that's something we asked when he was on the Indie Mayhem show for a few months ago, was, like, how is TNA doing? How is this new thing with Destination America is going? 
he says it feels like everybody's kind of getting on the stride and uh and uh uh, you know everything's everything's coming along. Um, I, I know he was very excited when he was on before because they got like like Destination America the the he said the most comfortable sweaters he's ever had. Oh, uh, uh, Davy <laughs> Davy had one of those. When, oh yeah, when he was down at uh, VOW, mm-hmm. I remember he he was rocking the Destination America swag. So. Does still look comfy. I didn't. I hear good things about this swag. Yeah, man. I, I just know that he had a, he had a lot of uh, Destination America stuff. There so. you go. There you go. Someone's got to let people know that the channel is out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but well, which is the problem? You know, is I, 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 to be it. quite frank, I don't even. I don't think I have it. I don't even know. Uh, I have Comcast, so it's I, it's probably it's, it's not the it's not basic. Okay, it's, so it's, yeah, it's, it's a tier up at least. Uh, on any mm. system, so I mean that's the problem. But still, it's out there, and it looks like from my I'm saying I, I'm I'm popping and checking out the YouTube clips, you mm-hmm. know, and, and kind of seeing it. it looks like it looks like a good wrestling show. Do they have? I mean, seeing. do they have the 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 full shows available online? Like a, not officially, no. Okay, because I mean, you can. Mm. That's in uh-huh. America replays them all the time. I think that's why they're not up online. That's the, yeah, that's the biggest oh, thing because okay. like. It, it, TNA really takes over from like what is it like Sun or Friday night through almost the weekend because they do a replay like right after yeah. the next morning and, is and like they do um like a recap not a recap show but like they throw in stuff with Mike Tanay and mm-hmm. he talks about the rankings which are arbitrarily given but apparently they mean stuff. Well, so. I, I think it's interesting because like Ring of Honor, which is is on you know syndicated television, but um, they also offer their uh, online for their ringside members, the mm-hmm. full shows. But also, they're they're syndicated, but they're not in every market. No, too. not no. So I think that's a, that's yeah. a big distinction for them. Mm-hmm. No, they they uh, they're. I think it's like eighty markets, mm-hmm. eighty two. I'm not. I don't know exactly because I know I know that Sinclair is always adding right uh, right new stations. But no, that they're. I, I remember. Um, I saw like what their penetration was as far as um, a, a, a stations <laughs> and. <laughs> I knew it was gonna. It wasn't gonna take long. No entendres. Continue. Um, but you know they were really strong in the in the Northeast and really mm-hmm. strong and 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 you could see the markets where they were really strong. Coincidentally enough, coincides with uh, where they run a lot of their shows. Right. And they're starting of to course. get and they're starting to get more into Texas, more into the Southwest. Mm-hmm. So hey, can, it, it, you, can you tell them to get to New York? I would like to watch Ring of Honor on my television. <laughs> Do you have that pull over there? Uh, <laughs> They're not. They're not answering my phone calls right now. So. <laughs> Should we bug Dombrowski? No, 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 no. Get We're New not. York on the phone. Get New York on the phone. <laughs> New York, you're on the line. <laughs> Mm-hmm. What is this show anymore? Um, oh, well, one more thing about Impact. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, they did a live tweet edition where um, they, okay. they would take tweets that people were talking about Impact and put them on TV. Were you on it again? No, I wasn't because I didn't watch live because I was watching something else. Daredevil. I was watching Daredevil. <laughs> Much better decision. <laughs> Much better decision. Um, they need to screen their tweets a little bit. Oh, longer, no. <laughs> no, nothing bad. Just not not impressive tweets. Although one of the – I don't know. Like, I don't. I know there are a lot of people talking about Impact because I do see it trending when I do the live tweet of it. But some of them were just like, "Good show at Impact Wrestling." Seen, <laughs> this is like, the best like, we have. Some substance. You gotta have. You gotta have a hook. <clears throat> have you seen the tweets from the ticker on the bottom yeah. of the WWE? Like anything from yep. WWE? Yeah, yeah. It's not. They're the pretty best much stuff. the same. M's good wrestling, McMahon. Well, no, they, but the ones in WWE probably have more exclamation points. And, yeah, that's true. Uh, They're more and excitable. It's, and it's a running scroll. The TNA yeah, one, yeah. it's like the bottom third of the frame. Mm. Like it takes up part of the ring. Okay. So, so they make you read it. All they right. Make you read it. Well, on that note, that's enough about Impact Wrestling. Let us know what you think. I know there's some supporters out there. As I, I know Dustin was a big supporter of Impact Wrestling. I hit and uh, we're trying to give it time. This is the only one we don't have a separate podcast for, so we got to put it somewhere. And that's their fault. They moved yeah. it. They did move it to Friday. That's their doing. So. Uh, and that's our enjoyment. That's our enjoyment. Well, eventually we'll have a tough enough cast too soon. Um, yeah, we so, will. I don't know. We got some fan mail. One, we already got uh, Mike Allen who does the show notes. Oh, I'm so sorry. We're up late again, Mike Allen. <laughs> but uh, he already sent a wrestling magazine. I'm going to hold it till next week. Okay. Uh, but I do see a giant phone and Paul Heyman in the picture. 
So I, I'll, tease that. I'll tease that a little bit. Talking about the OJ trial. Talking about the OJ trial. Yes. <laughs> he says he he says he got a better one. So um, two part question from our friend Gabriel in the fan mail right now. Let me get the right graphic. All right. There. Mm-hmm. You guys ready for this? I like <laughs> I, how much of a badass business. Okay. Did you answer my question of who was the funniest when Lunchbox was gone. I should. <laughs> <laughs> no, or wait, wait, wait second part question. Handle. Maybe I'm not reading this right. John Cena mentioned on Raw uh, that London should host WrestleMania. I was wondering if you guys think of WrestleMania being hosted by London. Do you think there should be a system like the World Cup in choosing WrestleMania location? Mm. Rip City Uprising out. Uh, what's the World Cup selection? Oh, corruption. Go, they, yeah. They oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know what? Money. Oh, we're at it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like a bid out. system, it's, isn't it? It's like you bid for it, don't you? Yeah, I, they bid for yeah. it, and I that mean, is kind of what rest, what happens. It is, it is. I yo, I, does this a time? Have I mentioned this on the show? My campaign that I started a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Is it to get the British Bulldog in the Hall of Fame? No, not that one. No, oh, the Bring Mania to Pittsburgh. Bring Mania to Pittsburgh. I pinged Bill Peduto. I pinged the Jagoff Pit Girl. I need to ping. Uh, oh no, I did ping uh, 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 Mikey and Big Bob of the mm-hmm. of the Freak Show. Bring it to Pittsburgh. We were looking at it. We we're pontificating at this. I think Jen Collins looked up the figure the figures for me after the last uh, pay per view party, and uh, I think it said they could hold like 60 some thousand in there plus i mean you think floor seats and everything that beautiful well, view this idea that like they could use the city as a backdrop and have all kinds of fun with fireworks and everything think of that what view. was pittsburgh's letter grade a a, a. a. we are an a, a. Nice. There, yeah, that was the other thing we have a chance there was a story that went around about the letter grades came out in a lawsuit uh around them trying to shut down all these other wrestling shows around wrestlemania weekend mm-hmm. ring of honor was there at least in some mm-hmm. aspect, yeah. they just watched the 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 show from oh uh, Supercard of Honor. Supercard of Honor. I, I, yes. By the way, uh, LB, if you haven't yet, go check out that last Ring of Honor show with the Samoa Joe match. I think he's back, man. It's the best I've, I've seen him look in years. I will give it a look. Give it a look. Him and uh, uh, Briscoe in the main mm-hmm. event for the really title. Good. Um, and also Bolton Castle next week. And the TV title was uh, uh, Jay Lethal and Jushin Thunder Liger. Mm-hmm. So. Also pretty tremendous. Um, but anyways, uh, what was I getting at there? You know, no, bring it. WrestleMania Pittsburgh. I want to push for it. I don't. If they had it in MetLife Center I at think, that time of year. I, I think that uh, SummerSlam would be a lot more of a realistic because of the right, weather. Right. And you and SummerSlam is becoming a bigger deal. Do you think they'll get to the point where SummerSlam maybe gets to that stadium aspect? I think maybe, so. Maybe even if it's like smaller stadiums. I think so. And I think Pittsburgh would be the perfect. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, venue for because what, what they're doing in New York this year, right? Is that summer? Yeah, this year? Uh, it was originally supposed to be the Izod Center that's right next to MetLife, mm-hmm. and I guess that closed down. And they're going to be in Brooklyn now at the Barclay. Uh, but I mean, like, if you get the right card, and uh, I mean, like, they've used Brock now at the past couple Summer Slams, mm-hmm. uh, they could absolutely, I think, Stable Center Heinz Field, it, even you know, Stable Center is a yeah. bigger venue for them, right? Sure, like, that's a bigger arena. Oh, Sta- Stable Center is huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think they could definitely do it. I I just don't know. I mean, with the weather. I mean, a a Pittsburgh March April. It was it was was cold. Yeah, that Life Center. I can tell you that. Oh, okay. It was really cold. They had to heat. They had heat. They had heat pushing in from the poles. (laughs) Oh, and and everything. Like they had had a whole mechanism down there to keep it warm at the ring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, f everybody else. (laughs) We were so happy. I'm in the nosebleeds above the stage. Mm -hmm. So happy with the flames from the Undertaker entrance. (laughs) So happy. So that's like where I'm, ice this ice hat? I'm wearing floor. this hat the entire time. This crazy Russian hat back here. Oh. Or I just wore Elmer Fudd, I guess. Um, but anyways, uh, uh, th- that's enough of that. Thank you, sure. Gabriel, for emailing us in and uh, and for us to have some fun with that. Uh, so mm-hmm. now it's time to learn. Did I miss we anything else? answer his question. Oh, I think we did. Corruption, <laughs> really? Did anybody else have anything no, to add to no. that? No, he was asking if WrestleMania could be held in London. Oh, and no, yeah. No. Why not? Yeah. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Why not? Why? Time, Why? time zones. They did Summer. Oh, they did they do UFC it. does. They can do and, it. UFC and, and SummerSlam was back in 1994 when there wasn't an internet. I think it's fine. Hello? I think they'll do fine. fine. NFL's doing it. What, what, yeah, is the, no, what does the UFC but, do? But when sword, they... The difference with the NFL <clears throat> is they're running that game at 9 o'clock Eastern right. in the morning. Right. SummerSlam, unless they change the start time of SummerSlam, to like three in the afternoon on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. If they want to keep it at eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 
That's like three in the morning. I don't think they have to. I don't think they have to. I, I, I think I think they'll do, there'll be a little bit of alignment. It won't be the time that you usually have, but it'll be an acceptable time. Yo, we remember, have, we have remember, SummerSlam was on at like three o'clock on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. Or I'm sorry, WrestleMania was on at like three o'clock on the West Coast. We can move this thing, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and if they'll do whatever happens to maximize it, and if it becomes a bigger deal, this is a worldwide entity. We, hey, we can't get to the moon if we don't start in London, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Nash said it. That magazine said it. This is happening. <laughs> there you go. Well, let's get to is, the. Is that a John F. Kennedy quote? <laughs> <laughs> oh no we choose to have wrestlemania at the moon and the other things not because they're easy but because they're as hard as the worst boss and, 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 and it makes roman reigns look strong <laughs> anyways oh, i want to know from roman you my bunch of hole through the moon my people of mayhem nation what did you learn from wrestling this week mad mike <laughs> I learned that we can all do <laughs> Kennedy accents. Kind of. Really bad uh, Mayor Kennedy <laughs> accents. Whew. No, that was Saturday. Oh. <laughs> Mike, give me an answer. Is that it? All right. I, uh, I, all right. I learned um, that TNA really didn't know what to do with the tag team division. Okay. All right. All right. You got to film with something, you know. All right. What about you, Eamon? Uh, I learned uh, that I'm in the minority when it comes to my thoughts on Naomi's heel turn because I actually liked it. Uh, I, I, I like that they did something beyond she's being a bitch or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, they're just being like, yeah, she's valid in her points and she's kind of right. <laughs> I like it. I, I just wish they didn't hurt her heel myself. But uh, LB, what about you? I caught you mid yawn, I know. I learned that uh, Shane McMahon's real name is Sean. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. What about you, the E Riz? I learned that I'm gonna I want to watch WrestleMania on the fucking moon. That's right. <laughs> and that made me so excited. It's gonna cost you a thousand dollars. Don't give a shit. That's okay. Nine ninety nine. That's why you got the network. Hashtag GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you Bobby. Bobby? Um, I learned uh, two good things, or well, one good thing, one bad thing happened with valets this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, the good thing, Fandango losing his valet. The bad thing, Damian Sandow gaining a valet. No. Oh, hmm. It's I'm okay. Not a fan, like I said, I'm it's not okay. a fan of Summer. I'm not a fan of Summer. I'm uh, sorry. Her voice <clears throat> grates on my nerves. Chris LaRusso, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, I learned that NASA needs to really, we need to up our funding for NASA to, uh, to, get, moon. to get this to the moon as quickly as possible, and that um, pay-per-views can only be held on American soil. That WrestleMania oh. can only be held on American soil. Imagine or the moon. entrance on oh, the moon. Yeah, I forgot well, that we, well, the United States owns the moon, so, you know. Don't we? we? We planted a flag. I think that counts. I, th- I think, yeah. It's I mean, us, yeah, and, the, oh yeah, it's it's us and the Nazis. Yeah, it's ours. That's oh. right. If you haven't watched Iron Sky, I'm referencing there. I thought it was a Wolfenstein match. reference myself. but uh, It could be a Wolf. I don't know. Did they do a moon thing on that? I Maybe think there was, a, there was a, games in, or one of the, in the new one. I think. Whatever. New one? We're I, I don't know. I'm not watching that. I, I, <laughs> I know no Rusev's entrance on the moon. Who <laughs> come in on Sputnik. Awesome. That's the one thing his entrance was missing. I learned that you could get knocked out by getting hit in the head with a tennis shoe. Imagine Terry Funk having a m- match on the moon. <laughs> I fought, and a loser has to live on the moon without any oxygen. Oh, remember the, remember the Tracy Smothers uh, loser leaves Earth match? <laughs> Not we can do that now. Just sitting at the moon waiting. From the chat room, I'm mean, sorry, from the Facebook group, we got a Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, a lot of conversation on there. I asked, what did you learn in wrestling? Phil, up there, uh, he says, uh, X Ring of Honor talent has taken over Raw Champions, and it's not a bad thing. It's mm-hmm. a good thing. DDP style. There you go. Uh, Tony Garza learned that none of my Mayhem host fans or guests were up to my channel. What's the challenge? We were all going to support uh, according to Patreon, but I'm trying to buy a fucking car and a new webcam. Yeah. So after that happens, I will gladly <laughs> buy a new Patreon. I'm putting for getting WrestleMania on the. Moon. I just hear excuses. I, I hear excuses. Put a penny. Put a penny, man. You can just donate a penny. 
Ooh, penny. Well, that'll be 30 pennies. For the cost of one Swedish fish, oh, you... you can fund the mayhem show. <laughs> for for <laughs> the cost of one Swedish fish. We Sorry. need Sally Struthers up in here to, to help us. We do not need Sally This is getting no, weird. No. Gabriel says he learned that Prince Puma has a sexier Superman punch than Ro Roman Reigns. Why is Roman Reigns in quotes as well as Prince P Puma? I don't understand. Also <laughs> learned that Drago from Lucha Underground has the coolest mask ever. Dra Drago. And that is also, that's a true fact. Jen Carlin's learned yes, it is. nothing. Riz <laughs> also learned that next week Dean Thanks Ambrose for will... chiming in. <laughs> Riz also learned that Dean Ambrose will job the Fandango and Adam Rose and a loser leaves WWE match next week. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Carlin's learned... Matt Collins learned that missing nearly two full weeks of WWE program will not bother me in the least. Missing one episode of Lucha Underground haunts me for days. Mm. Guys, let us know what you learned and all the rest in uh, WMS Big Question and follow us uh, 412-206-WMS0. Good times. <laughs> oh, that was just noise. Yeah, was, <laughs> you gotta work on that. Uh, oh, good times. Wheels. Are, uh, good times. Wheels. Oh wheels. shit! Wheels. wheels. I'm sorry. Learn? I shut down that hangout on that side. I forgot he was in there. Uh -huh. Wheels, what'd you learn, real Wheels, quick? What the hell did you learn? What did I learn? I learned that Neville is amazing oh. with a 450 splash off of. Hell yeah, yeah. Give hell me more yeah. Neville Rollins. Keep it up, keep it up. Um, uh, where was I? Uh, oh, Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show .com. You can also Good please time. go to Wrestling Mayhem Show .com, Subscribe to us on all the video versions and the audio versions. Just subscribe, subscribe to all of them, even if you never open the app. That's just just to help us out. And please comment. I put a big run to uh, please help comment on the Wrestling Mayhem Show iTunes, which I was supposed to check on there. Uh, we'll read those if we see any come up there on the show. Uh, and uh, I did have a challenge that you get something free if. Uh, uh, if you entertain me for the week on the iTunes comments, I didn't see any come we, through. So uh, that is open. Uh, I will, yes, I will hook you up if you if you are the most entertaining uh, iTunes comment of the week. Um, it's time to kiss a sword's ass today. Well, you know, not a kiss my <clears throat> ass. It's just to no, help us out, man. Ours. Tell the people about it, and not just us. If you listen to a bunch of podcast subscribe to them all i mean they will subscribe to them yes you, uh, you probably already have but uh, uh comment on them all it, it's 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 a really w good free way for you to help out podcasting big thanks to mike allen pr on the twitter is at michael allen for doing the show notes and the tweets all night long way way past his bedtime i'm so sorry mike uh and so much more uh check everything out at chris larusso at the eris at hot wheels rwa also at rwa pro for him at panel Ryan, at dj lunchbox at sawtooth willie i'll let you figure out who they all belong to at bobby fj town at amen to please insert coin at insert tb coin tb uh at the eris um and i think i got everybody at that point i'm at, at mad mike 483 mayhem out This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.